<laughs> please come forward. Uh, please come forward for me and my son and my family. Please. I'm, that's all I ask. Please. I'm so heartbroken. <laughs> and I don't know how far I can keep going. So please come forward for me. Thank you. Warning. The podcast you're about to listen to may contain graphic descriptions of violent assaults, murder, and adult language. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the Murder Police Podcast. In this episode, part one of Never Forget Little Timmy, we sat down with Timmy's dad, also known as Timmy, and his dad's girlfriend, Ashley, to discuss the missing case of Timmy Sterner. Welcome to the Murder Police Podcast. We have with us today Timmy Sterner and Ashley Wethington here to talk with us about the case of missing Timmy Sterner. Thank you all so much for being here with us. How are you today, Timmy? Yeah, not too good right now. I'm very sorry. I'm very breakdown right now. I'm so emotional still. And I, I'm still hurting, and very much so. And I don't know, I have no clue where I'm at today and where, where time's taking me. And I promise you to my son, I will see you again, son. And I'll see you soon, sooner you think. I miss you so damn much. So damn much. Well, Timmy, thanks for uh, having the courage to put that lump back in your throat to talk about this again because it's an ongoing problem, and I know that every time we speak of it, but our goal here is to get some other people in the community to have that same emotion for who Timmy is and uh, and to come forward and whatnot. So thank you for the courage. I can't walk in your shoes. There's a part of my mind. That nobody, me. nobody can, right. unless you've been there. Yeah. Nobody can. And never thought I was going to be. Never. All I was wanting to do is see my son. One, you know, just as soon as he got out of prison, he had a rough life. Don't get me wrong. He had a rough life. He had good friends, though. Yeah. And he thought he was street smart, and he was street smart. He was he was very smart. Very smart. And I, it was my fault. I raised him too fast. I raised him too fast. And, it, you know, I blame that on myself. I wanted him to be a man because I was, I was great. I was raised too fast, and I run the roads and did what I, I did, you know. But he didn't, he didn't deserve this whatsoever. No man should deserve what, what happened to him. And I still don't know what happened. And I need help. I need help, and I, I, I got to lay there every night and think about my son every night and cry myself to sleep. That's what I do, but I'm very angry now, very angry. It's like nobody's helping me here. Nobody's helping little Timmy. Nobody's helping my family, and I need somebody to come forward and tell the truth, please. For my son and me, give me closure. Let me move on. But that'll never happen, will it? Because I'll never have closure. Because my heart's always going to be broken for the rest of my life. Y'all took my son away from me. And, oh, that's, that's fine. I'll see him again. I'll see him. He'll be holding his hand out to me. And I believe that. Well, hopefully we can put some hope in this maybe with, again, letting people know who that, who that young man is and, and, uh, and to answer that, that call that you're asking for for help. And, and Ashley, uh, thank you for being here too. I, I would imagine you're, uh, 
Tim's moral support. Oh, yeah, it's been really hard watching him go through it. Right, hard to be next to somebody Mm -hmm. going through that, too. So uh, thank you again for being here. Well, we know Timmy is is obviously little Timmy's dad. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us, Ashley, um, how you... How do you fit in the mix here? Who are who is Timmy to you? Um, his fiance wife. We've been together fourteen years, so Timmy's like a son to me, and so I always tell him that's my son. And so I've been in his life since he was fourteen years old, and he he didn't deserve this at all. Um, I was supposed to. Pick him up at Wednesday to take him shopping. And it didn't happen. He called me, um, I think it was Tuesday night, and said that he had gotten a call that, you know, he had wrecked. And we just don't know. We, we don't have a clue. We can keep getting told different things. We just don't know the truth. They know who done it. Yeah. They know who done it. And do. I don't understand. You know, if that was me, they they done put me underneath the prison. Mm-hmm. And these people sit out of here and, and they know exactly who done it and who's involved and why ain't anything being done about it. Yeah. I think that's what we need is that because we're from what we can understand just diving in talking to people so far is there's so much out there that confuses it. Mm-hmm. Some of it's clearly probably made up for whatever reason. And yeah. somebody having the maybe the courage to come forward and straighten this stuff out. Well, let, let's go to this. Let's talk about when was Timmy born and what was that like? It, and uh, When Timmy was born, he was a, I lost a son at birth. He, I lost a son at birth. And right after I lost Chase, Timothy Chase, well... I decided to have another son, and it was a son, and I was so happy. <laughs> Best thing in the world, you know. And I worked my ass off for him, and I finally got to the point in where I could, I get, I could give him everything. Everything, anything you want now. And, and they took him from me. I couldn't give him what I wanted to back then. I was working. I was working out of town, making good money. But I still couldn't. It, back then, it wasn't that kind of money. Right. Now it is. Out there, you got to, you know, you have to, just got to get out there and make it. And And I knew he was getting out of prison. And I was like, now I could, he's going to get a new car, new clothes, new everything. I'm going to set him up and give, make him go to work with me. He was even looking for apartments for him. Well, he, yeah, he was getting all set up mm-hmm. before that Tuesday night. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Well, I do want to move into how you all found out he was missing. But before that, why don't you tell us what, what kind of little... Boy, he was. He was. He just a fun, oh, yes. fun, rambunctious little boy. He, he was. He was. He loved to run and laugh. And he was. He was great. I remember his first uh, bicycle I bought him. <laughs> it's Christmas. Yeah. Did you teach him how to ride it? Yep. Yeah. Right behind him. And Hanging I'm, on. Oh, I, yeah. Let him ride down the street. The winter time. <laughs> yeah. So I guess you worked out of town, so you would come home and kind of catch up from the week yes, you've been gone, and and um, yeah. and then spend my time, and you know, and then head back out. Yeah. Make more money, pay the bills, and head back out again. You know, being a dad. Yeah. Being yeah. a father. And then I really started going out of town, and my dad took him underneath his wing, and my dad really raised him growing up, I mean, quite a bit. And he loved his grandpa so much. He did. Seems like when my grandpa passed away, that's when he went downhill. 
You think that had something to do with changing his attitude? Yes. Just lose oh, that yes. loss? Yeah, him and my dad was tight. Yeah, his grandpa was his world. That'll do it. We lose somebody close to us like that, that'll do it. Grandpa was his world, and after that, he just uh, started acting out, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Just running around with the wrong people and stuff. Yeah. What kind of hobbies did he? What things really? He liked football. That's what we he keep hearing too. Yeah, yeah. I think your brother and your mom told us that he he really was was proud of being yeah. you know, doing that sport, and he was good at it. Mm-hmm. He was, but then you know, football come out because he started running around with the wrong people. It's like the people that I know that none is to him. You get with that that wrong crowd, right? Wrong mm-hmm. crowd. That wrong crowd. Yeah. I saw that over and over again during my career, too. I mean, they were waiting for him. You know, they was waiting for him to get out of jail. Everybody just kept asking, mm-hmm. when's Jimmy getting out? When's Jimmy getting out? Yeah, he was set up. Yeah, it, sound, it sounds, you know, we've said before that uh, this is one of those cases that hurts because you have a last known location, mm-hmm. last known scene with is what we would call yeah. in a business. and. Yeah. Moving and getting the truth out of uh, more than one person is what this needs, and mm-hmm. uh, yes. and that's what this does. The people we've talked to so far talked about how when Timmy took you under his wing, so to speak, he'd just do anything for you. Oh, no questions was. asked. No, he was there mm-hmm. till the end. Yeah, with with he'll fight till the end for his friends. We heard. Yeah, he and would. Um, so he that's would. that. Uh, you know, we, he had so he, he don't mess with daddy. Mm-mm. Don't mess with me. Very protective. He, oh yeah. Yeah. Me and my son was the best friends. Yeah. I mean, I was. I'd stay on his butt. He knew I meant business, even when he was in prison. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, you know, I know you, what you're doing in there. I don't, you know, you're in there gambling or something. Mm-hmm. Daddy, I need uh, fifty dollars. Uh, I I took care of it. I was always there for him. Sure. In there sure. or out here. Yeah. But that night, I wasn't there. Yeah. When when he was in prison, did you get to stay in contact with him pretty oh, often? Oh, he called me. Every yeah. week. Good. Sent good, letters good. and stuff I'd like that. I'd send him money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Letters. Yeah. I mean, keep him comfortable. It's mm-hmm. a long stretch. But no, it's hard care. for me. I can't read. Mm-hmm. I can't read a letter. Gotcha. It's. Mm-hmm. Well, at least you got the phone calls. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's something, too. No, so. back then, I could read the letter. I knew where he was. I knew he was safe. Mm-hmm. I still, I wish he was there now. Yeah. You know? Why do you, why'd y'all let him out? <laughs> yeah. Why couldn't you, you got into another fight or something, son? <laughs> yeah. <Exactly. laughs> you got another, another year yeah. or something. I what knew a place, where he was. Yeah. What a place and to I'd have to be. not save me money. What a place to have to be that you, uh, You'd rather yeah. have him there than out amongst those people that, yeah. uh, that obviously... It's, it's bad. I was yeah. nervous for him to get out. Well, reentry for anybody mm-hmm. is is a difficult thing because the world... It was years, changed in it the, changes all those years, you know? And yeah. uh, you go from that position of uh, everything is to the, to the degree it is, it's provided for you. Yeah. And then you've got to spill back into mm-hmm. the world like a kid coming out of your house for the first time pretty much is what it's like. Um I've I've met some reentry specialists, some people that focus on trying to to get people prepared for coming back out again, and it's a it's a tough battle, tough battle. Nobody, well, we, we nobody's do. gonna know how how I feel, but to every day that I wake up, he's on my mind. I wake up in the morning and look up and see his picture because I got a chain that sits there, got a picture with wings on it. I had him made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I talk to him every morning, every night, every day. And it, it's so hard. It's, it's too hard. Mm-hmm. Well, moving into that, when you all, how did you all come about finding out little Timmy was missing? I, I know you said you were going to take him shopping mm-hmm. and. Tammy called, didn't you? Yeah. But at the and time, you know, the story that we got, we just thought. You know, he didn't want to get in trouble because he wasn't supposed to be driving. And I'm like, well, if he's running, he's going to call. He'd call me. He would call him. It didn't matter what it was. He would call and we would know. And I even, where are you at? You know, I sent a message to his Facebook. Where are you at? I'll come get you. And, you know, 
and nothing never did get had you back. all talked to him when he got released had yeah, you, you did. did have a he, chance to talk at, with him yeah he, he was at crackle barrel mm-hmm. and i told him what the situation was i said well i said wednesday i actually take you shopping and this and that so be ready because you mm-hmm. were out of town working yeah right? I was working, mm-hmm. yeah and then i got a phone call when i was out of town yeah because after that after i was going to take him shopping where I work for the school system, it was coming up, getting ready to be summer. I didn't hear from him. You know, because a lot of times people look at, um, especially somebody in a situation, is is taking off mm-hmm. and, and hitting the road. No, I wasn't here. But that, but that's rare because mm-hmm. they usually people don't disappear as much as we want to believe they can disappear, right. especially with a tight family. Yeah. And I've if, everybody I've met from the met when we met at lunch. Is I knew right away that that's not going to be the case. He no. knows that he's he's going to reach out for help. And uh, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. uh, if if he was like more estranged from the family, you could kind of yeah, see that. Yeah, you kind of see that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, one, Timmy. You know, one of the first things you look at is he be on my front doorstep. Daddy, let me in. Let me in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 27 years old. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But that, I mean, it's, uh, you know, because it'd be, uh, again, people don't disappear. That's how like close we the family think. is. Mm hmm. That's what I'm gathering. I don't think that that would have been a part of that at all. So you all received the call from Tammy, Timmy's mom, mm-hmm. saying, uh, "I don't know where he is." Oh, but she went and got you know she went and got her. She, she the car was there and all that. Her car was there, but he wasn't. But he was. Mm-hmm. He so, was not there. So then I guess when you were done with your work that week, you came back yeah. and started looking. Mm-hmm. Well, they didn't want me down there. No, they detectives or nobody wanted me mm-hmm. nowhere around. They wanted me in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Starting our name here is Nicholsville. We've been here all our life. Right. It's, a, it's a, not a great name because me and my brother, don't get me wrong. I mean, I know these people, but I never hung out with them. I grew up with them, but they wasn't my kind of people, mm-hmm. you know. They are just awful people, nasty people. And the bottom line is that they was afraid for me to be in the town. They know what I can do. They know what my brother can do. They know we got friends. And so they didn't want me in town. So I, I did what I had to do, and I stayed at work. I went back to work, and that's where I've been since. And just the only thing that's been helping me is work. <laughs> Except waking up in the morning and going to bed at night. You need a place to focus on something other than that, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, sometimes maybe that distance is good, too, because we could take something that's bad and make it more bad. Oh, yeah. Or worse. Oh, I can make it up. And, and you <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, you're good. You're good. That, that, I mean, the whole thing is, like we talked about before we started, is there's if, if justice has to be served, we want it in one place, and that's in a courtroom. That's right. We don't want it on everybody's opinion right. on the Internet. That's why we don't share the rumors and things like that. Mm, is that yeah. Is that we want, uh, we want if, if and I, can I say, I, I feel pretty confident in, in what KSP's come up with so far, and we won't talk about that. I feel... Very confident. It may take time, but I I believe you're going to get answers. I, I think hope. it's going to come. I swear to God. I, I think it's going to come. And especially if people, again, listen and watch this and hear you all and hear the rest of the family and the friends and uh, lean on those people who probably know. And uh, because it's been long enough now to where you have the people who, if they were right there, they yeah. know. Mm-hmm. They've talked to people by now. Right. There are people oh, who have yeah. that third party mm-hmm. statement. And, uh, They've got to get off their butt and just you know, talk. Oh, every time I come into town, I can walk into a store, and get just a, a convenience store, come back out. And people, just I don't yesterday. even know what happened yesterday. Timmy, I turn around and look. He said, you hear anything about little Timmy yet? No. I said, they're still working on it. Yeah. And, uh, well, you know, I didn't even know that. Yeah. And then so many people come mm-hmm. up to me and ask me about little Timmy and stuff. And and they know what happened. I'm sure they they know what happened to little Timmy. There's a lot of people out here that knows what was happening to little Timmy. Come forward. That's it. Help me, please. Help me. God bless. Help me, please. 
I think that's what we're hoping for by doing this segment on Little Timmy is that somebody somewhere will come forward. I know you all have the reward out there. Uh, we interviewed Randall, who talked about he has chipped in on the reward. And, you know, even if people, you would hate to think people do it only for the reward money. You would think people yeah. would do it for the right reason. Right. Um, but I think our hope in doing this is that uh, I don't know that the people that are responsible has in, has enough conscience to even come forward. I don't think people like that have a conscience. But my hope, and I'm sure you're all's too, would be that the people who know something, they would come forward and tell what they know so that justice can be served and you all can have answers. Right. But you know, we know this is a fact that if it's more than one people that know, some people better get off their ass and cut their losses. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Because there's only so much time that uh, that you coming forward will benefit you compared to the other people, and you lose. So, you know, the, the chain is only as strong as the weakest link, and the weak link better get their butt in gear. Yes, yeah, sure. Because uh, yeah. there's an opportunity right now, and I've, I've never talked to the state police detective, but I know from doing it, there's an opportunity right now for somebody to come clean on this and start the answers and they'll benefit. That's just a given. They're, that's uh -huh, the way this all uh -huh, works. Yeah. So somebody out there, and I'm pretty sure my bet would be if somebody's directing them to listen because we've handled cases like this before on the show, they better get off their tail mm -hmm. because that that's uh, that Dollar General is going to close and the deal is going to be off pretty soon. And uh, and uh, and again, I just I just feel confident that uh, mm -hmm. it may take some time, but I feel really good for you all. That Thank I just you. I feel that uh, this one has what we'd call solvability. And uh, there's a lot of work that's been put into it that, that feels good, too. So in the end, I guess uh, I'm going to start with you, Ashley, and then we'll, we'll come back to Tim. But uh, after being in this in this guy's life for half of his life, what would you ask the public to do uh, in this case? Just come forward. And you may be scared or uh, you don't want to go to prison yourself, but just please give me and his dad closure because it's hard watching him every day go through the pain and hurt that he's going through and it's rough yeah the whole community's lost yeah and i mean there's a there's a ripple effect yeah that we don't feel safe when something mm -hmm. like this happens and and of course uh tim what would you ask people to do <laughs> please come forward I, please come forward for me and my son and my family Please. I'm, that's all I ask. Please. I'm so heartbroken. <laughs> and I don't know how far I can keep going. So please come forward for me. Thank you. Well, thank you all so much for coming. I know this, I, like David said, I can't imagine being in your shoes. Um our heart breaks for you all too. We've been really, really um, following this and we've gotten really, I'd say a lot closer than we have with similar situations. We've been close to families that have lost people, but we, you know, we're in the same community you all are, and we've really delved deep into a lot of your family members and, and talked at length and it's, our heart does break for you all. And I hope the same thing. I hope that we can find you all answers and i think that's the least that that people could do is is give you an answer to what you're looking for so you can start healing because i i, I don't think you can ever heal but i think you can I'll never heal. begin that at least you would have an answer instead of all these unknowns because right now that's all you all have mm -hmm. is a lot of question marks so thank you so much for taking the time and the courage to come in and talk to us. And we hope that somebody out there will find it within their hearts to tell even the smallest piece, if it's something so small, tell something so the ball can get rolling. Again, you'll be in our prayers, have been, will continue to be. Um, and for our audience, if you're the praying type, go ahead and hit it. Uh, I'm a big believer in it. Mm -hmm. Is uh, We need to pray to turn some hearts. So thank you all again. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, you know there's more to the story, so go download the next episode like the true crime fan that you are. 
The Murder Police Podcast is hosted by Wendy and David Lyons and was created to honor the lives of crime victims, so their names are never forgotten. It is produced, recorded, and edited by David Lyons. The Murder Police Podcast can be found on your favorite Apple or Android podcast platform, as well as at murderpolicepodcast.com, where you will find show notes, transcripts, information about our presenters, and a link to the official Murder Police Podcast merch store, where you can purchase a huge variety of Murder Police Podcast swag. We are also on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, which is closed caption for those that are hearing impaired. Just search for the Murder Police Podcast and you will find us. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe for more and give us five stars and a written review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you download your podcasts. Make sure you set your player to automatically download new episodes so you get the new ones as soon as they drop. And please tell your friends. Lock it down, Judy.